Hi everyone, it's Ray with the Education Team for Cerule Days Kit Club, and today I'm going to show you what I did with the January 2013 project kit, and it featured the Tattered Angels paint system and this cute little album by Ruby Rocket. So I'm going to start with the covers, and I'm just going to briefly tell you what I've done. I haven't glued a lot of this stuff down yet, like the flowers and stuff, but I want to show you the techniques that I'm going to use. First, I use this stencil. It's crackly, and I use some gesso with it, and I put that over. And it's kind of difficult for you to see it in the camera, I think. It looks like it's picking it up pretty well, but it's just one of those techniques that's really subtle, and then when you get a closer eye to it, you can really see all of the detail. So I started with that. And the next thing that is the big part of the kit is using this uh, paint system. We were supposed to get the aged copper and it was pretty blue because it was looking like patina, but we had some sort of a mix up and we ended up getting the bronze one instead. And so we've made do and this is what I came up with. And so what I did was I made it kind of look like leather, so it's faux leather. I'm going to show you how we did that in just a sec. So just to go over what, I, what else I have on the cover, I've taken a die. It's a memory box die, and it's a corner one. I think it's Madeira cover, or Madeira corner, sorry. Um, and I've just cut it up, and I'm going to make it to where it's coming out of the leather, and then I'm going to put these Prima flowers right here. And these don't come in the kit. These are from my stash. It's the Prima Enco Encore. They just looked really nice with this and so I thought I would add those. And in the kit you get the ribbon and this is a pleated ribbon and then this is a crocheted ribbon and this comes in the kit. So what I did is I layered it. It's three layers of the crochet and then I put some of the pleated ribbon right there and it just gives it a lot of dimension and I used some little pearls from my stash. And I've also stitched this leather, well faux leather, paper that also comes in the kit and I added a picture and then this is from the new Prima Sunset Sunrise or Sunrise Sunset line and it comes in the embellishment kit so if you got the tech kit this isn't going to be in there it's only if you got the embellishment kit. And then I used some alphas from my stash and these are really old, but they're classic and they look cool. And I just wanted to show you, the reason why I'm doing this right in the middle of it is that I wanted to show you what the difference was. Like this is what it would look like if I didn't ink and distress the edges, but this looks so much better if I've distressed them and I just scratched it with my fingernail. And then I just used some of the chestnut roan. Chestnut roan also comes in the embellishment kit. So if you didn't get that, you can just go out and buy some of this. I think pretty much everybody has it. And these are real stitches. So that's what the cover is going to look like for the most part. And I'll glue the rest of that later. But I did want to show you how to use the paint system. I didn't use it exactly how it's supposed to be used because I did want that faux leather look. So I added a couple of extra sprays at the end. And I'll show you how to do it. So I took this paper from the kit and it's the suede paper and it's very thick and it's got multiple layers on there and that's how I was able to do this part of it because it looks like it's coming up it looks like it's multiple pieces but it's not it's just one so what I did is I traced this out this is going to be the back and then I started with using the paint system and at first I'm just going to follow the instructions and excuse my mat this came from one of the kits I tore a hole in my mat and so I have to go buy a new one. And I tried to go buy one at Michael's but imagine this, there's no coupon this week so I could not get it because I am cheap. Okay, so to start out with you need to use the butternut squash and it says to saturate it. And I have really used most of this so I don't think I'll be able to get any more out of it. I was just experimenting trying to see what it would look like on both of the different kinds of papers that came in the kit. And I think I sprayed too much butternut squash in the beginning of all of my projects because I hardly have any left and I have a lot left over of the other ones. And the sprayer's not working great. Okay, so I had to pour that butternut squash into a, a different 
missed her because it wasn't working. So hopefully this one will work. Yay! Okay, so the instructions say to saturate it and make it pool. And then while that's still wet, you need to take the woven burlap, and that's the lighter of the two browns that come in the kit. I'm just going to shake that up. You're supposed to do it side to side. I don't. That's probably why they get clogged. Okay, so what you want to do with this one is you want to let you want to do the left side is what it says. That's just the suggestion. So I just do this, and I still have some of that butternut squash still showing through. And then the next step is to take the tattered leather again, shake it up. And this time you want to spray where you didn't spray the woven burlap and still leaving some of the butternut squash in some places. So I think I'll just do that and that. So it's kind of pooling. That's okay. Okay, so then the next step is to take the cowboy, and that's a glaze. And the instructions say to use some of this with some of the woven burlap. So I'm just going to pour some of this out on my mat. And then take the woven burlap, make a little spray to mix it together. And I'm going to mix it with a paintbrush. and then randomly flick it on. When you do that, you might not see it right away, but this glaze acts as a resist, so it will really react with a heat gun. You'll really be able to see it more, and it's gonna actually give it more of a green hue wherever you see that. All right, so I'm calling that done. I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up a tiny bit, see if I can't get some of that extra along the edges. And then I'm going to hit it with a heat gun. Okay, so it's mostly dry. I'm going to set it aside though and just let it finish drying while I do a couple of other things with the cover. And I just wanted to show you really quick what the difference is, is in between the papers that you get in the kit. If you use the other one, and this is the brushed cotton one, you get a completely different look. You can see it doesn't even really compare. I wasn't very impressed with that. I'm sure at some point that would be kind of cool, but it definitely wasn't going to go with the album. And the other thing I also did when I was experimenting with the paint system is I put it on a manila tag. I thought this one came out a lot better. And then I actually brushed it with some white paint and scrubbed it off with a baby wipe just to kind of see what would happen. So even though I'm doing this, there are other ways to use the paint system. Okay, so the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this gesso and stencil on the back side of my cover. And I'm not going to put it on the design, probably from right about here. This is seriously the coolest stencil. I'm so excited. The only thing I will say about it is it's really hard to clean because then you don't want to lift these parts up, so I'm going to soak it in some water after I get done. Okay, so both my gesso is dry and also my faux leather is dry. And so now it's time to start assembling it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distress the edges of my album cover. I'm gonna use the Prima Distress tool. And then I'm gonna ink the edges with the chestnut roan. And because it's the back, I'm not really gonna do a lot of embellishing, but one thing I am gonna put on there because I put the larger one on the front just to give it some fluid, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on the back. So I'm just gonna take some Fabri-Tac and glue him down. And now I'm gonna crumple this up. And then I'm gonna decide where I need to rip it on here. I know I want that clock completely exposed. I 
think I'm just going to make a rip. I can't really rip this paper, so I guess I'm going to have to cut. So I'm going to play around with that just a little bit, fold it up. I might even spray some more of the woven burlap on there just to make the color match a little evenly. I'm going to roll these up. I'm going to see if I can't separate the paper. And I can. So I'm going to separate that and then I'll be able to roll it back up still some more. And I think that's about what it will look like right there. So now my paper that I've used the paint system on is completely dry. It's actually been a couple of days, I'm not going to lie. I took a break from scrapbooking. A crime, I know. Anyway, so this is what it looks like just to review. Review that myself. And this is what it's like. I put some script stamps on here, but you can't really see them. They didn't show up that well, so... It's no big deal, I guess. Excuse my hands, I got in a fight with some radiant rain. I think it won. I apologize for that, because they look really bad. Anyway, so I've decided these are the parts that I'm going to keep, like this, and I have stitched them with real stitching, which I don't normally do, but for a mini album it needs to look more real, so. That's what I've decided to do. So I'm going to tape. Uh, I'm going to glue these down very quickly, and then I'm going to add my lace to make it match the cover. And I'm going to call that done. I don't want to have a lot of stuff on the back because I want to be able to sit it flat without having to worry about things getting ruined, like flowers or delicate little leaves, like I put on the front. And so that is the last piece. So I'll show you what I did, I'll explain a couple of things, and then I'll show you a couple of techniques that I used in here. So what I decided to do for this album is to, I used a quote that I found on Pinterest that I really like, and you'll see that I wrote it out uh, or put the stickers on here as I went through. So I've already showed you what I've done with the cover. And these are the first two pages. I was hoping to put pictures in here, but it didn't really work out. My printer's on the fritz. Anyway, so this is the first page, and it says, First, we had each other. That's the first part of the quote. I didn't really do anything too fancy, but the two things I will show you is that I did this chipboard. What I did is I put some archival ink on there, and I just pressed the archival ink onto the chipboard, and then I ended up spraying the whole thing with some radiant rain, and you can see the teal on there. Turned out pretty cool, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. I did that on every single piece of chipboard on here. So the quote is, first we had each other, then we had you. So I'm going to put my firstborn's pictures on these. And of course, I have more than one child, so I put and you down here at the bottom. And you, my last born, will go on here. And the last part is now we have everything. Look at that awesome butterfly. You can get these butterflies from Angelica's Etsy shop. Okay, so I'm going to show you that chipboard technique, but I also want to show you something else that I did. I used this piece of cardboard, and what I did was I put gesso on there, the kind that comes in the kit, and then I misted it. And if you can see, it almost looks like there's bead gel on there, but I didn't want to use bead gel because I'm lazy and I didn't want to have time to dry. So what I ended up using was some of these pop microbeads. So I'm going to show you how to do those two techniques now before I go. This is so simple. It's a great way to make things look distressed, but a different kind of look. I'm just pressing the archival ink on there, kind of scraping it a little bit. Spray some of this Radiant Rain. This is the Teal Zircon. It's really high pigmented. 
and you spray it over the whole thing and hit it with a heat gun. And when it's dry, this is what it looks like. One of those happy accidents. I'm excited about using that again and again. And the second thing I wanted to show you was how I got the background for this chipboard. I'll give you a close up of what it looks like here. What I actually did is I had a piece of 12 by 12 and I just cut up different pieces. I actually didn't cut it, I just ripped it apart to put it as backgrounds behind some of my photos in the mini album. So what I did first was I took some gesso and I just dumped some of it on. And that's going to act like glue for these pop beads, these micro beads. I don't want to douse it, but more than others in some spots. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my Glimmer Mist, that's the vintage pink color, my favorite. Starting with my lighter colors, going to my darkers. Ah, too much. Go back in and hit it with a heat gun. And now that those colors are set, I can go ahead and just spray a little bit of the brown. This is the woven burlap that came in the paint system that comes in the tech kit. Put some of that drop on there. And then I'll hit it with a heat gun again, and then I'll be able to rip it up and do whatever I want with it. So those are the techniques that I used inside of the book. Um, I hope you get one of the kits. If you don't already have one, you can go to the Swirly Do's Boutique. If you go on the left-hand side of your screen at swirlydoos.com, you'll see on the left-hand side there's a little icon to push, and it says Boutique. And if there's some available, they will be there in the store. Chances are there won't be. So I hope that you're able to get one. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, go to swirlydoos.com. We have a lot more tutorials on everything everything you could possibly imagine. We have over 100 video tutorials also. So thanks for watching.